Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've had a lot of people, probably one of the most requested board um, over the last few weeks. The keyboard that we're taking a look at today, um, I reached out to Mech Keys and I asked them if I could take a look at it because so many people had requested it. and. Not for nothing, I, I kind of liked it as well. Um, this was due to come out a little bit sooner, but the weather, Mother Nature had other plans, but here we are. So thankfully, at least I've gotten around to it. Now, I just recently reviewed my first ALA, and that was sent to me by ALA. It was the um, 98, I want to say it was the F98. It was very nice, 1800, um, 98%. Yeah, I believe it was 1800. I believe the cluster was out, but I, but it was a nice sounding keyboard. And a lot of this sound test that I've been listening to for this Alma, which I've listened to some of the sound tests, but I don't know much other than it's got side lights and it's a TKL. But this one has been highly requested and I'm glad to finally be able to bring it to you guys, courtesy of Mech Keys. They sent this out to me in exchange for an honest review. As always, my opinions are my own. But we are taking a look at the Aula Wind F87. Now, the one I took out a look before, I wanna say it was the F98. It was also in the Wind series. So these all seem to be um, in the same series. Now, I've also, I don't know how much of this, but I've seen this listed as the Leo Bog F87. So, being as I just took a look at my first Leo Bog keyboard, the High 75, which was really nice out of the box, um, and how much the Aula F98 surprised me, I'm going to guess that this one's going to be a good keyboard. So just real quick looking at the box, because other than seeing some of the sound tests or listening to some of the sound tests, I don't really know much about this other than it's TKL. Um, it is gasket mounted. I wasn't sure of that, but I think I just assumed that it was. It's also a three mode, uh, wire 2.4 and Bluetooth. And let's see. So it looks like it's got a full four millimeter travel with the switches that are on here. Looks like they're double shot, but I'm not sure um, if they are PBT or ABS, but we'll be finding that out. All right, so in in the box, just uh, greeting us, we have a very nice user card. I'm fond of these. These are, um, in my opinion, they're good to keep around for the first couple of days you're starting to use the keyboard because it's going to give you uh, the majority of the functionality that you're probably looking for is switching between Mac and well, Mac, iOS, Windows, or Android mode. Um, Although some of this stuff is in Chinese, this is from Met Keys. I don't think that this is an international version that I know of. See, now this makes me think that Leo Bog has something to do with this. Because if I'm not mistaken, these are Leo Bog Gravewoods. And if I had to guess, I think they're V3s. Oh no, this might be V2s. <laughs> These are the first Leo Bogs I've actually heard any ping. It's slight. It's very slight. I think it's the leaf, the leaf uh, spring. But they're still super smooth. So these might be V2s. So, but yeah, that definitely makes me um, see that the listing that I saw that listed this as a Leo Bog in a whole new light. Wire keycap and switch puller. We also have a rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable, as well as a pretty decently sized user manual that does come, looks like it comes in three languages. And here we are with the Ala Wind F87. And I gotta say, this is a chonky boy. And First thing I noticed, there's an indicator for caps lock right there. I mean, you could probably switch the color, but that's going to show up whether you got the LEDs on or off. So um, I cannot complain about that. It looks like we have a um, 
dark or hammerhead dark colorway on here. It's very similar to that anyway. Um, now, real quick, let's take a look. I think we do have a PC plate. Oh, took two keys. Yep, we do have a PC plate there, which is always a nice thing to find. Uh, we do have north facing LEDs. We have what appears to be an IPXC sheet above the PCB. We have what feels like a silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB. And then I think that feels like an open cell phone down below the uh, PCB in the case. But I mean, don't get me wrong, these Leo bogs are kind of a cheat code. These are some really nice linears, but I dare say it sounds similar to the Leo Bog High 75 since, um, ah, I don't know. It, it sounds really, really good. Uh, I, I can honestly say that for a pre-built TKL, this is the best I've heard a pre-built TKL. Um, obviously that excludes Tiger Light and a couple of other TKLs that I have that were bare bone. But as a pre-built, I have not heard a TKL. It sounds and feels as good. It's not super bouncy, but it's just the right amount of flex. The kind of flex I like. I don't like when you push and I'm bottoming out the whole PCB to the bottom of the case. That's too much for me. I just need a little bit of flex. Actually, I'm fine even with tray mounts, but if I had the choice, I prefer gasket mount, just not the super flex. But this, this is nice. It has a um, interesting lines, and that's where the uh, LEDs shine through. I have a front, no, just the side. This is just, it's one of those keyboards you can just buy and go. There's no need for modding. Um, I'm, I'm taking the back. I forgot to check on these keycaps. All right, so they are double shot. I do believe they're PBT, but I'm not 100% positive because I've seen them listed both ways. Well, let's see what the thickness on them are. 1.4, that's a very decent thickness. I'm usually happy with 1.4, 1.6 or higher, but um, as long as they're more than one, then, uh, then I'll be happy. So we have some decent keycaps, we have some decent switches, and despite them being stock because it's a PC plate, don't hear any of that slight ping. And these stabilizers, let's see. Oh yeah, they're, they're on there with a Kung Fu grip. Let's go ahead and pop them out. Oh, these are just like the other. These are just like the Leo Bob. They have this little, I don't know if it's a pad, and that's the pad that protects it. It doesn't have feet, but they're well lubricated. I usually am not a big fan of these milky ones, but these feel, feel a little bit more substantial than the ones I'm used to. Ah! I, spot, I spy with my little eye PET film. I'm finding that is, it really does, it's, that's in the Leo Bog, so even more um, confirmation that this is a, either a collaboration or a Leo Bog made keyboard. Um, it has the PET film. Now, I have actually purchased some PET material. Now, this is four mil thick, so I'm having to... I can use uh, the tip of my my exacto blade to make the holes for the center post of the um, of the switch. And if I'm just using three pin switches, they go right through. These pins penetrate just fine. But if I'm using five pin switches, I have to use like a push pin or a needle 
to make the holes for either ones of those pins or I can cut them off. I'd rather not do that. It doesn't take that long. I've done it on one keyboard so far, but I'm gonna be doing an entire video where I apply this um, to several keyboards and show the difference that it makes. Now, um, the PET film, the, the PET film, uh, which is polyethylene tetra something, I forgot the T word part of it stands for but they are basically um between all the different foams because it definitely has foam below the pcb it creates i don't want to say poppy it brings a lot of the um the keyboard to life the sound profile and it almost gives it a I, I hate to say creamy or marbly, but it's definitely, it's a bit, it's a thonk. It's, a, it's like a midway between creamy and thonky. But, yeah, I mean, there's not, not many keyboards that I can say stock sound this good. I mean, I can, I could throw this on my desk right now and I can go to work. I'm, I'm not going to be bothered by the sound of it at all. It just sounds good. So taking a look at the bottom, we do have three feet. And this does not remind me of any previous TKL I've taken a look at. So this is definitely a, um, a newer design or one that hasn't been used on any other keyboards I've come across. I like the fact that they have a magnetic slot for the USB 2.0 dongle and that it has a logo on there so i'm not going to have any troubles if i come across this somewhere hey man are you the right dongle let's plug it in and see what it looks like oh i like that i thought that was going to be an indicator light but it's just more of the uh what looks like the side light. Oh, the side light kind of goes around the corner. Huh. I like that. I like that a lot. Definitely going to be playing with these lights. All right, that's the effects. I'm definitely gonna have to go through the manual to figure out the effects on here, but there's the caps lock indicator. I actually like that, I mean, most via keyboards, um, if it has the uh, ability, I will set the, um, no, I should say QMK. I will set the color to change on the caps lock key if it's activated. I don't remap the caps lock key. I actually use it sometimes, but that's neither here nor there. So having it as a side light is much easier. Today we're taking a look at the Olive Wind F87. It is a three mode TKL that is also available in wired and comes in multiple color wings. It is preloaded with your choice of switches. This one is loaded with Leo Bog Greywood V3 linears. It also has double shot PVT cherry keycaps in the dark hammerhead colorway. This keyboard comes weighing in at 911 grams and is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for default typing angle of six degrees. Flipping out the first set of feet, you will raise the back up to 35 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to eight degrees. Raising the final pair of flip out feet will take the back height to 44 millimeters and change the typing angle to 12 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $54.99 as a wired single mode version or $65.99 as a three mode version from mechkeys.com. So I've got to say we've got a lovely stock keyboard. Um, I've already done the sound test and it's just this is probably, and I say this non-hyperbolically, the best TKL pre-built out of the box that I've encountered. Um, 
besides the V series or the V3, one of my favorite uh, TKLs, though it was primarily bare bone, was the um, the FL Esports uh, MK87. But that one, steel plate. I like the the Keychron V3, steel plate, PC plate, Leo Bog V3 switches, um, a good amount of dampening. It looks like they have the PET film in here as well. Uh, three mode keyboard with a pocket, caps lock indicator next to the caps lock, uh, the side glow. I've got to say this is one for the books. I am. <laughs> I now have a waiting list for daily drivers, but I'm going to be pushing this one up, and I will be coming back to it to open it up to see what's in here, to see if we can improve it somewhat. But it has that creamy, crunchy stop profile, but I think we could probably make it a little bit louder. Probably adding the tape mod, and maybe even trying out some different switches but I love the keycaps I love the um, I love the look of it I love the lights I love a lot of things about this keyboard this is uh, <laughs> if you're looking for a TKL and you do not want to mod you just want to take it out of the box and go well uh, this is gonna be it I mean this is it's not an F13, it's just your standard TKL. I can use this as a daily driver, and I am... The colorway, <laughs> it works because I like it. I like the fact also that it's available in a lot of different choices. You can get get as low as, I think it's either $49 or $54.99 for the no RGB version. There's a lot of people out there that just don't care for the RGB, and that's fine. So they can actually choose... Hey, I don't want RGB. Just give me the board. All right. So there's a lot of choices with this. This is the second Aula keyboard that I've uh, reviewed. And thus far, they're both winners. Um, the, F80, or the F98, which was the first one I took a look at. Great keyboard. This one, even better. I mean, honestly. The other one is, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with it. It's a great keyboard, but TKL, TKL will always have a place in my heart. It's been, I want to say I've had a TKL ever since TKLs were a thing. PET film definitely makes a difference. I've already done it with two keyboards, a GMK67 and an Akko 5075. And I'm working on a video that will show uh, because I found both PET film that you can buy like from Amazon or hobby stores. But I found also another plastic that many of us will have already in our household that we can use as well. So I'm planning to do several of the same model as well as some different keyboards and do before and after sound test and show you guys how I do the pet mod. I think the pet mod is going to be this year's tape mod, to be quite honest, because, <laughs> I mean, the tape and the pet, good combination. Now, the tape alone does bring out some poppiness. The pet, though, it kind of mutes out, not mutes it in a bad way, but softens the sound. Helps that thocky or deeper tone to become more creamy or marbly. Uh, so, it's a... It's the sound that everyone seems to be looking for right now, and it's definitely, I mean, I've got some, I'm going to try this on some steel plated, you know, gasket mount like the TH-80. I've, I've got an Epomaker TH-80 sitting around for forever, so I think I'm going to finally do something with it and see what it sounds like stock and what it sounds like with the PET mod and then what it sounds like with the PET mod and, say, tape and perhaps changing out the uh, foams in there. Denser phone helps reach more of a clacky type sound and more open cell phone seems to reach more of that thoughty or deeper level sound. But I've yet to try that. I'm gonna be testing out with EVA foam, felt, polyfilm, uh, kill mat, all those different. And I wanna see 
what combinations work because I think PET with a combination of foam is really going to make a huge leap in how any keyboard sounds, whether it's gasket mount or uh, tray mount, though I think it really makes more of a difference on gasket mount. But let's see. I've even got an LK67 still in the box. I haven't touched it. And maybe load that up with some standard switches, maybe some milky yellows, uh, do a sound test, and then see what difference it makes with the PET foam. And just so you guys know, the PET foam goes between the PCB and either PE foam, if you're using that, or the IPX she sheet that comes with a lot of the newer keyboards. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Ola Wind F87 3 mode TKL. Um, I think that you guys uh, will like the sound test as I, I do, but I'd really like to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think about it? What do you think about this TKL stock and how it sounds? Is there anything that you'd like for me to try when I come back to this? Please let me know down in the comments below. Let's get a conversation started. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.